Then the second hour has no homework questions because they are doing a great job on keeping up with their homework. We're going to move on to the review questions. So you will notice that the first two sections, those are the review sections that we already tested. So there's not a lot on here, guys. You can go back to your old review, or better yet, you could go back and do the actual assignment that you were supposed to do in the first place. That'd be best. Um, I will tell you that this question on linear velocity, which I don't mind doing with you, um, that actually went really, really well on the last test. I was very pleased with that one. What didn't go well that we need to do better on is, so like arc length and area of a sector. You guys did a great job of knowing formulas and knowing how to use them with one major issue. What is theta? It's the angle measured in radians. So if in the application questions I give you an angle measure that is measured as like 110 degrees, y'all got to convert that. And that was a reason why many, many, many of you got a three on this section. It had nothing to do with what I thought was the hard question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You have to show me work. Okay. You didn't use either of these formulas on that question? Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. I mean, there's other ways, yeah. All right, so this question that is on your review, um, it's going to be a bit harder than last test because this time instead of just converting one of the late data values, you're going to convert two things. So first, the angular velocity is kind of given to you, but it's given to you in RPMs. So rotations or revolutions per minute. But that's not okay. Um, you're going to need to convert rotations to radians. So the conversion for that, remember, is 2 pi radians per one rotation. And then the other thing you have to convert for me, if I keep reading, they want my answer in feet per second, so you got to also convert minutes to seconds. Oops, a number of So it would be best if we give real-life application answers. So, like, if you write down 40 pi right now, you're not wrong, but that's just of a weird thing to say. So whatever this is as a decimal would be better. Can I get some help on that? Six repeating. Okay. Um, and this is radian per second. So I'm going to use that angular velocity when I go find linear velocity because the easiest formula for me for linear velocity is angular velocity times the radius. Using this angular velocity you just got and multiplying it by your radius. Now, this is another place where you got to be careful. They give you the radius measuring 15 inches. I need your answer in feet. So, what I do is I just take 15 and divide it by 12 within my work. Um, you guys are really good about keeping all the math on your calculator, so you probably just took the answer you have and multiplied it by 5 twelfths. Either way, I do need your final answer around us in your 10th place, please. What is this? I really don't know, so I need your help. 157. Is that what? Like 100? I think you misplaced a decimal somewhere. So one? Feet per second? There we go. So, there's no examples here. You can go back to your other review and other homework assignments if you'd like um, from previous homework checks. But for the other two formulas, arc length and area of a sector, which will be on your test, you need to make sure you have radian for your theta. It has to be in radian. All right, four three is the other extra um, retake section. This was a hot, hot, hot mess. That's why we all have that extra practice for 4.3. The answer key is on the back of that worksheet, by the way. Um, but this particular question, here's where everyone went wrong, if it went wrong for you. The word sketch. 
Some of you took that a little too liberally. You were like, sketch, like a triangle in space. So you drew me a triangle, like, in no man's land. That's not what I'm looking for, guys. I'm looking for a, what looks like a coordinate plane sketch. So the ordered pair of negative 21, 20, let's just pretend it's over here. Regardless of what a good sketcher you are, you should be able to tell me that it's in quadrant two. And I know it's not proper to label triangle legs as negative, but I don't care. Now the radius, you could do Pythagorean theorem, or apparently this one is a Pythagorean triple. I didn't know this one off the top of my head, so I did a little bit. It's 29. And now you have to understand about the ratios. This is a reciprocal ratio to whom? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So my brain totally knows cosine, because we've done cosine for like three years now. Uh, cosine would be this guy over this guy, so secant would be the flip of that. So negative 29 over 21. That was it. Well, some of you were very cute with your triangles in space. You're too strong of a word. <laughs> All right. Um, this is that worksheet, that extra worksheet, okay? You also could go see an old homework assignment. I think I had to write this note on a bunch of people's tests. Page 251 book assignment, which is on worksheet 7B. It was supposed to be in the last homework deck. That was great practice for this section. So if you never did that, you might want to go look at some of those questions. But otherwise, we got this worksheet as well. Um... These are a lot of practice questions, though the test is not this many, so don't panic. Seek it, a 13 pi over 4. All right, I got a lot of things working against me on that question, guys. First of all, I don't know where 13 pi over 4 is. So then I get kids who are very clever, and they're like, I'm just going to type this in my calculator. All right, go ahead. How are you going to type seek 13 pi over 4? Let's start there. Well, you can. Yeah. All right, so I heard 1 over cosine, 13 pi over 4. Now, what mode are you in, Adam? Okay, because this is a radian measure, you'd have to be in radian mode. And then your calculator is going to spit out something icky. And then you're like, wah, wah, it's one of the icky ones. <laughs> so now you're back to the drawing board, okay? Unless you have rational things memorized, I don't, um, you're going to have to go back and figure out who this is. So the next thing I think about is, well, 13 pi over 4, no thank you. I'm going to convert that to degrees. That's what I do. You guys don't have to, but it's what I do. So this really says the secant of, was it 585? Okay. And then I'm like, oh, fantastic. I don't know where that is either. So then I find a coterminal. I take off a rotation. I'm much more comfortable in degrees. So now it says secant of 225. And then I'm like, yes! Unit circle. Ahoy. Go find 225 degrees, which is U. And they want secant. Now. I know secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Don't flip this version of it, though. Remember, negative square root of 2 over 2 used to be this. This is just the rationalized version of that. So the true triangle is this ratio. So if you were to flip these, this one, well, that's a lot easier to look at, guys. What's the reciprocal of that? Negative square root of 2. If you did rationalize it, you're still going to get the right answer, but I found some people did that. A lot of hard work, and then made a mistake, yeah. Wasn't great. Now, in fact, if you type negative square root of 2 in your home screen, does it match that icky decimal you originally got when you typed in 1 over cosine of 13 pi over 4? Hey, look at that. You just learned what square root of 2 looks like as a decimal. Me neither. So, there we are. And Gupta won't want to hear that from you. She doesn't want to know that you know how to type and can memorize decimals. She wants to know that you can use the unit circle. All right, so watch out, guys. Some of these have negative values. Negatives are importante. Even radians, degrees, I don't care. It's still important. So have you figured out where negative pi over 2 is? Maybe you can visualize that. Remember, measuring negatively is this way. Yep, we're looking at this guy. And they want, I forgot, tangent. Oh, my gosh, tangent. How do you find tangent? Okay, so the opposite adjacent formula is right when given a triangle. The quadrantals aren't triangles, so now I get to think of another version for tangent. And by cosine over sine, you meant sine over cosine. Right? The other way to figure out tangent is to do y over x. So which kind of comes back to your opposite over adjacent formula, because the opposite leg in a unit circle triangle would be the vertical leg. Okay. So y over x for this angle measure 
is what? Undefined. So my happy calculator typing kids, if they're in radian mode and they type tangent of negative pi over 2, they're going to get their undefined value, and that means it's an undefined value. Okay? So it's not wrong for you to immediately reach for your calculator. But then you got to be careful, because what if my kid who's like, oh, I love typing in my calculator, and they go to do number 2? Well, you don't have to, but you do have to be in degree mode. So if you're flipping between using calculator like all over this test, you got to watch your mode, man. So how do you type cotangent? 1 over tangent of 750. And then in degree mode. <laughs> it's disgusting, and you're like, God. So then you go back, and you're like, forget it. Uh, now I'm going to take your advice about subtracting rotations because I don't know what's going on. And I think we need to subtract two rotations so I can see what's going on. This is the cotangent of 30 degrees. So then I go over to 30 degrees and I look at that ordered pair set. And then I think to myself, self, what is cotangent? Cotangent is x over y. <laughs> but I like your passion. Um, so, oh, well, no wonder it came out so gross. X divided by Y would be X times the reciprocal of Y. Oh, well, that didn't come out too bad. Turns out decimals are real gross. Square root of three is that funky thing you got on your calculator. Yeah. Now, do I want you to do each one of these questions with and without a calculator? No, that would take a lot of time. Your calculator has to be, this is a moment. As a 21st century learner, you got to be like, okay, is it appropriate to use my technology right now? Is it easier, more efficient? Is it quicker? Is it going to slow me down? Like, you have to make all these decisions. And, some, and that's a personal decision, right? Sometimes you don't have time to make a decision, true. Uh, I might suggest on this test tomorrow, you start by doing these repeated sections first because you need good scores for these. I'm not saying, like, you don't need good scores for the other part. But, like, I don't plan on retesting these again, guys. I'd like to move on. So we keep those good scores. But don't spend all hour trying to figure it out. Oh. This question, this is on your review. Man, we ran into the same problem. It asked for a sketch, and then I kept getting these triangles in, like, space. That's not a sketch, people. Well, think a little harder next time. All right, look at these clues, y'all. Daniel, it's your moment. What does it say? Five. Yes, which means true. What else does it mean? Positive. It's positive. Your cosine values are coming out positive, while everything else apparently is going to come out negative. What quadrant are we in, y'all? Quadrant four, yes. So you're over here. You can be fancy and give me Roman numerals, or you can just write down the number four. Now, this is where I kind of violate math, and I say legs are negative, but I don't care. Um, the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, right? So the <laughs> vertical leg is, I'm going to label it as a seven at first, but then I notice it's a downward movement. I'm going to call it negative seven, and then the hypotenuse is ten. I'm going to have to do a little Pythagorean theorem, though. 7 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. That's not pretty. 50 squared is 51. 100 minus 49. Ooh, that's a 1, not a 7. Ew. Isn't that beautiful? Now, that is positive, though, because it's moving to the right. <clears throat> cotangent. Oh, boy. All right. So, one more time, guys. What's cotangent? tangent. Oh, x over y, or you can think of it as adjacent over opposite, you know, old school formula. It's reciprocal tangent. So it's the square root of 51 oops, over negative 7. The negative can go anywhere in that ratio. It's not really proper to put it in the denominator, but whatever. I'm a rebel. Whatever. All right, so that's old stuff. We good? You're going to do way better this time. Yeah, clearly. Okay. So I didn't give you any review examples for this because you have like a whole homework assignment to do. Worksheet 11, man. Check it out.
Now, I will tell you on the test, there's no graphs. Like, you gotta draw your own graph, which I think is better, because that way you control all the axes and the tick marks. I really don't like when they give me an already done graph. And I gotta, I gotta figure out where, like, my mark is and... Like it's not skewed. Well, good news, you get to control that, so, yeah. Yeah, so Daniel's a big believer in, like, every axis is, is his, so he labels it whatever he wants it to be, and his, what I would call the x-axis, Daniel calls the midline every time. I'm okay with that. You're, the, you're in control of labeling it on your test. So the other thing you'll notice on your test is there'll be five ordered pair skeletons kind of off to the side where I ask you guys to label the five ordered pairs that you marked, and you just put them off to the side instead of on the graph. It's really a me thing, that's so I can grade your test a little more efficiently. The first thing I'm going to look for is, how'd you do on those five ordered pairs? Hopefully the answer is really well, and then I take a peek at your graph and make sure everything looks good. Okay? So this first section is called basic graphing. You're going to see period changes and vertical stretches, you know, amplitude changes. You're going to see vertical shifts. The only thing you won't see will be no phase shifts on that section. Okay, so basic, meaning nothing crazy. So this is off worksheet 11, things like this. So this is what Daniel's talking about. He's not a fan when they give him the axes. He'd like to make his own axes. Good news, you get to. All right, advanced graphing. So we're on a review now. Advanced graphing, this is the harder one. I think we should do this one together, if you don't mind. This is very a la what's on your test. Actually, I would claim this is harder than what's on your test. It is real weird. Okay, so here's what I need. I need to make my axes, and I'm going to purposely make Daniel mad by putting the axes shifted. <laughs> yeah. It is, in fact, your form. Good call. Um, so here's my axes, and I'm going to have a midline at 1, and then an amplitude of 4. So yeah, I need to get some labels down, but I'll get there. Yeah, it's not quite pretty. Open up. Okay. So midline was at one. Adam told me this was a five because he moved up four and then moving down four would bring you at a negative three. I see we have a cosine graph and you guys were discussing with me. Yeah, I don't really like that there's not an extra set of parentheses there, but whatever. The B value is a one half means the period is going to change. Let's talk about the period. Normally a 2 pi, but you divide it by b. So then I got to go back to fifth grade for a minute. Dividing by half, same thing as multiplying by 2 over 1. So the true length of the period here is 4 pi. I then go find the quarter point. So the quarter point would be if you take the period, and you divide it by 4, this is going to help me with what I'm counting by. So 4 pi divided by 4 is pi. What I like to do is I put a k after that. That tells me that I'm counting by pi. We'll come back to that in a minute. Because the other thing I notice about this graph, because why not, it's got a phase shift. How has this been shifted? To the right, pi over 3. Okay, that's kind of irritating, because the first time I mark something down, it's going to be at pi over 3. And then when I go to make my 1, 2, 3, 4 more markings, the way I move from point to point to point is I'm supposed to add pi. So, here's your choice. You can bust out the calculator and type the coefficients only. You can say 1 third plus 1, math enter, enter, or you can go back to the grade with me, pi. Same thing as 3 pi over 3. Now I chose 3s because that would match up with my pi over 3 denominator, you see. Yeah, okay, say again. You called this pi over 3? You can do whatever you want as long as you label it. But this is the part I'm interested in. What is this next point called? Well, yeah, and that's the challenge, right? So 1 pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3. Okay, add another 3 pi over 3. There we go. See, y'all passed fifth grade. You got this. 
There we go. So that was fun. All right, so now I got to remember what I'm graphing. I'm graphing a cosine. There's no reflection. So that very first point, for cosine, is going to start way up here. And this is why we purposely didn't give you guys any graphs, because since you control the axes, every time you put something down, you draw a point, which is nice. Oh, lovely. A bruzo, that was one half ugly, one half beautiful. How I do my makeup, too. Like, one of my eyes looks great. Guys, you don't understand this. There's that one eye you just can never get right. Never. It, I get my left eye really, it's a good one. I think it's because I'm right-handed and I'm like, oh, that's your good eye? And then I spend 10 minutes trying to nail them back out. And I'm like, the guys are like, I'm done. <laughs> okay. So the other thing I'm going to need from you is all your ordered pairs. So what you'll see on your test is a bunch of these. Okay. And while it doesn't practically matter what order you give them to me in, if you can try to go sequentially, that's really nice because then I don't have to go hunting for your correct ordered pairs. So like this first one is at pi over three comma five. And then this next guy is four pi over three comma one. And so on and so on. Oh, All right, 10 pi over 3, 1, and 13 pi over 3. I think so, uh, just because of the nature of the common denominators, like, yeah, so like the one on the test, it's like pi over 2, pi over 4 family together. So like, if you're not real great with common denominators, at least it's something that you're a little more comfortable not easy. I don't want to call these easy because they're not. But you know what will make it easy? If you do your homework. Throwing that out there. <laughs> All right. Um, still on the review. This one. Okay. I'm not super stoked about this one because I noticed it as a phase shift, regardless of whether you want to call it sine or cosine. But this is what I promised you. Remember our homework on this? Uh, yeah, what am I saying? You don't remember the homework. <laughs> the worksheet 14, I think, was your homework. And it was a bunch of hand-drawn, like, graphs, and it was really hard to tell where the max and mins were. So Mrs. Hoffbauer, the sweet angel she is, she used, like, Desmos, a computer thing, to create ordered pairs that are labeled for you. So, like, clearly I can see that this is the maximum line. And if you look at the ordered pair over here, this is clearly a height of 2. And then similarly down here, this minimum line clearly is at a height of negative four. And then the midline, this guy, clearly at a height of negative one. So already I have a lot of things that I need to fill in in this question. We'll get there. Oh boy, you guys. Talk to me about amplitude. What's the size and the power of this wave? Uh, yes, good. Now, amplitude is always a positive value, regardless of whether you think there's a reflection or not. It's the power of the wave. Period length. You might have to stop and think about. Well, here's the thing about the period length. Start, stop. It could be anywhere in the graph. So you just have to like choose a starting and stopping point. And I'm just going to choose right here. I'm going to say we're going to start here with this guy. Whoop, and then you end right here. It says one cycle. You okay with me saying that? Okay, so I'm going to highlight. You know what this picture needs? More colors. Okay, so there's one cycle. So it goes from pi over 3 to 5 pi over 6. If you could figure out how far apart those are, you're in a, a good position. You could just subtract the coefficients on your calculator, or you could go back to fifth grade with me and call it 2 pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, which is a difference of 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, I heard. Uh, period. There we go. So now I got to remember what that means for the b value, because what I really need to put in the formula is the value of b. So b is 2 pi divided by the period. Oh boy, fifth grade, coming back at you again. How do you divide by pi over 2? You multiply by 2 over pi. Don't forget that. The pi's cancel, and you get a 4. A shift. All right. We have to make a decision. Do you want to start this at sine or cosine? It's up to you. 
okay. I heard sign. I'm going with it. If, in that, are you okay starting right there, though? Okay. So that means our phase shift, and we're going to start at sign. This phase shift is right, pi over 3. Vertical shift should be obvious to everyone at this point, because we have this midline. So vertical shift of down 1. And technically, the same question, in my opinion, is where's your midline? So y equals negative 1. These are the same idea. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. Taylor decided we were doing a sine function. We'll talk about those of you who decided this was a cosine function in a second. Um, so sine function, if we start right here, we're choosing that to be our original point. We don't have a reflection. So we got an amplitude of 3. Sine. Okay, this one does have a phase shift, so you got to keep the B factored out. Yes, Daniel? Yeah, okay. You don't, okay. You don't have to. You should. <laughs> because at the very worst, factoring it or distributing it back in, you could make a mistake. And at the very least, now I have to think whether you're right or not. Because my key does not say that. I think so. All right, a phase shift of right pi over 3 would look like this, right? Theta or x minus pi over 3. And then down one, down one. Now, Mrs. Hofbauer, lovely lady she is, she said, no, child, I think this is a cosine. Crazy lady. No, she's fine. She started her cosine graph right there. She's right. All right, so you could have, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then there's some other crazy kid out there who starts it right here. Oh, it's not, no, it's okay. It's pi over six. And it's upside down z cosine. Right? Could it be halfway between zero and pi over three? Oh, it's not? Oh, it's not. Never mind. It's something else. Ew, don't look at that. Okay, so here's, I'm going to give you guys a little insight to how lazy teachers are. And this is more of a me thing than Hofbauer, so no, dis no discredit to Hofbauer. These are really horrible to grade because of what we just talked about. Like, I think it's a sine. I think it's a cosine. I think it's a reflective cosine. I think it's a reflective sine. I don't want to have that many answers in my key. So on your test, we gave you an option to have no phase shift if you just say, I think it's this. So if you want to be weird and be like, no, well, it would be easier to be a sign with no phase shift. I think it's a cosine with a phase shift. Like, do what you got to do. I have both answers ready. I just, we're hoping to lead you to the obvious answer because that would be easier for me to grade. Just to be a jerk, you're going to do the shift to code center. Who? Oh, like for a loan. A good joke. Cosigner for a loan. <laughs> All right. Modeling. Now, in first hour, this review went a lot smoother because in first hour, they asked me homework questions off of their modeling homework. Yes. Multiple questions. I know it was difficult for them, but they did. No, they whispered. Could you please look at worksheet 16? Um, so we did a bunch of homework questions off of worksheet 16. It was wonderful. Wow. <laughs> we should have done the same. Yes. Would you like to now shift over and look at worksheet 16 or 17? <laughs> <laughs> It's going to fly the rockets. Not quite. It's going to design the rockets. Um, I think now... Oh, okay. No. I hope, man. You might want to look at where she's 16 and or 17. So take a 16. A good, a fine choice. Number three. Excellent choice. Oh, man. Look at that. Well, why are you so worried about three? Oh, it's not bad. We can look at it real quick. All right. So worksheet 16, this is number three. And they went ahead and gave you the function. Now, they did write it a little weird. They wrote the vertical shift first, which was interesting. So first question says, determine the period. What does the period represent? So the period is going to be calculated by 2 pi being divided by your b value. So again, grade ahoy. How do you divide by pi over 6? You multiply by 6 over pi. 
so the period comes out to 12. Now, you might have noticed that in the calendar year problems, 12 shows up a lot for period, which makes sense because there's 12 months in a year. And therefore things start repeating when you get back to January. Okay, cool. So determine the period was a represent, well, it represents the calendar year. Okay, so let's look at the part B. What is the maximum high temperature and when does it occur? Um, you could just type this on the calculator. Uh, or you could think about, okay, I didn't actually sketch it, but I could have. I'm going to pull a Daniel for a minute. Midline at 60. If your amplitude is 25, who's this guy up here? 85, right? And you have a sine function with no phase shift. So without changing your calculator, my low, 35, thank you. If you guys could figure out what this marking is, you'll know where we're at. Well, guys, that's the first quarter point. So if you took the period and quartered it every three months, you hit your next point. So this is three months later. Oh, wah, wah. Where do we start? Not in January for once. It starts April 15th. It's like zero marker. So April is month number four. So we're looking at month number six. Three more than that would be 7 July. July 15th. I don't know why calendar years are so difficult for me. Uh, because it's April 15th is the start of the question. I don't know. Middle of the month. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can go back now. What's up? Okay. So, sure. Well, I'm going to sketch it. I always start with a sketch. Helps me kind of outline everything here. Beautiful. Right, so, um, reaches a height of 74. And then a low of 12. So I have, to, I am really bad at visualizing middle things, so I have to calculate them. My midline is max plus min divided by two. And I heard it's a 48. Oh wait, what? 43 makes more sense, yeah. So this is where I double check I didn't do something stupid, because I do stupid things a lot. That's my amplitude. And it's that, you could calculate it if you don't trust your math. But I heard it's 31. Does that work out going top to bottom? Okay. So you just found a few things for me. We'll get to the equation in a minute. There's a really important clue in here somewhere about like where it starts, where it stops. It has to do with time. At three seconds, it's at its high point. So I'm just going to suck it up and pretend like my graph starts right here. So for me... I have a phase shift, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to call it cosine. It's going to be beautiful. The only thing I don't know right now, though, is period. There must be something in here about period. At five seconds later, it reaches a low point. So be careful. This low point right here is five seconds past the three mark. So I'm hearing that's an eight. So the period length would be another five seconds, um, which would bring you to 13. But guys, be careful. Three to 13. 10, there we go, the period is 10, which means my B value is a very beautiful pi over 5. All right, I am ready to throw all this into the equation. The amplitude, cosine, not reflected. So in front, we got a 31, cosine, B value of pi over 5, leave it factored, because we do have a phase shift. I'm okay with that. Um, I usually tell you to use a D. I'm just going to use a D. Shifted to the right three, and then your midline here is a 43. The graph is key. The period, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have three minutes, so <laughs> I'll do what I can. All right, page 17, number 10. That's the clock question. Oh, man, everybody panics when there's a clock. All right, 17, number 10. 
So this question, the center of the block is 40 feet off the ground. So that's your midline. Oh, very straight. Good job. <laughs> well, that's not my doing. All right. So the middle is 40. No, the minute hand is what they're referring to. So the minute hand's radius is the amplitude, how it's changing. So I think it's four feet. So the highest point that the minute hand edge will get to is 44 feet off the ground, and the lowest is 36. That's a big clock. Well, it's out in the middle of town center. Everyone's going to see it. It's like a Back to the Future talk, uh, talk tower. <laughs> oh, because you're that old. Okay. My bad. All right, so this is where everyone gets confused on the clock problem because they're like, you didn't tell me the period. That's because you know what clocks do. They're a clock. Okay, so if it starts at noon, the minute hand will be up at the top, and then it goes like this, because it goes around the clock, and then it comes back to noon, but it's not noon anymore. <laughs> it's one minute afternoon, or one hour. What are we doing? Minute hand. Okay, so we're measuring in minutes. How long did it take it? The 60 minutes. Very good. So the period is 60 in this question. That was the key. You got it from there? You know the period is 60 you can go find b there's no phase shift life is good all right um back to the review though daniel are the paddle wheels bothering you still is it the paddle oh, wheel or oh okay i got you um make sure that when you guys are doing this guy some calculator notes right radian mode when it asks you for iterations we're sticking with a normal three everybody do three for the period you should leave it blank Make sure you store your equation. And then just watch how they label things. X equals 1 represents January, so they're going old school calendar year here, okay? So on and so on. Just watch out. Sometimes they skip months. They didn't do it this time, though. All right. We're going to do better this time, right? Yes. And you're going to turn in some homework. I swear to goodness. You have a bad test and you didn't give homework to me? I'm going to first cry, and then I'm going to call your parents. All right. Not yet, but I'll keep it on the back burner. But what if I got to call your parents with good news? Like, look what happened. Oh. So, all right. Well, good luck, everybody.